What's going on everybody, this is me Alex, and in today's video I'm going to be comparing Apple's one year old flagship, the iPhone 5S, versus Google's one year old or eight month old flagship, the Nexus 5. So without any more further ado, let's go right ahead and show you guys what are the differences between Apple and Google. Everything changes. The video is finally here in which I compare Apple's newest flagship, the iPhone 5S, versus Google's newest flagship, the Nexus 5. When the iPhone 5S got released in mid-September of 2013, Google decided to release theirs about a month ahead, and they decided to name it the Nexus 5, arranged from the line of Nexus's Nexus 4, Galaxy Nexus, the Nexus 5 was born. When the Nexus 5 was released, it launched at a launch price of $350. Now it's around $350, which is the same. While ever the iPhone 5S off contract cost a giant $650, almost double of what it cost of the Nexus 5 off contract. That was a big major. However, since the Nexus did have a larger screen, most people decided to not go with it because back then they decided still know that Apple for some reason is still doing better in smartphones. But let me give you a little hint. They're a bit behind. The equivalent specs of the iPhone 5S is an equivalent Android to a Samsung Galaxy S2. Yes, you heard me right, the S2, which is an old phone. It dates back to 2010 is when it was released. And over here, the specs and the hardware, they look a lot different. If you notice, the power buttons are different than the iPhone 5S has it on the Nexus on the side, and the iPhone 5S has it on the top. The first thing you'll notice is, of course, the range and screen size. The screen size is giant compared to the iPhone 5S, meaning to around 5 inches or 4.95 to be exact, while the iPhone 5S is only running at around 4. So that is a giant plus, and a Nexus 5 has close to 400. 41 pixels instead of the iPhone 5s only having 326 so that makes it about of a hundred higher than it does on the iPhone 5s Looking at the iPhone 5s it still keeps the minor design looks of the old iPhone 5 With the only differences of a new fingerprint sensor a better camera and gold color plating The Nexus 5 is offered in only a few colors black and white However, the Nexus 5 is still offered in better colors the iPhone 5S is in color for, is is offered in colors of gold or champagne, which is the version I have here. It is also have an 8 megapixel camera on the back with the 1.3 megapixel camera on the front. The first thing you'll notice when you pick up the iPhone 5S and the way that you'll identify it from previous iPhones is the fingerprint reader on the front. The fingerprint reader is a distinctive look and it looks very sleek and slim to me. I really do love the design of how Apple sort of embedded and got rid of that little square in the middle. It does give the attraction to me a lot, but not so much that I will actually purchase this phone myself even though I've already done it. Uh, the fingerprint sensor seems to work a lot, but depending on which finger you have registered and for some reason the thumb is the only one that works for me even though I have all five fingers registered on my right hand. And once you do not get it right, you will ask you to please enter your passcode and you have to enter the passcode because you have essentially been locked out. Now as I told you before, I did have the gold model. Here is the silver model. Well, JK, it's actually the gold model, but in under certain light conditions I've told you in my review, the silver or gold actually looks silver. So when I'm out in the sunlight and I first got this phone and I showed it to my friends, well, they've been sh telling me it's silver. No, it's actually gold. But the specifications are, as I told you, a little bit bad. They would feature an Apple A7 processor, which is a relatively 64-bit architecture, one gigabyte of DDR3 RAM, one gigabyte less than the Nexus 5, and it also is offered in 1632, which is the model I have here, or 64 gigabytes of storage. Now the specifications on the Nexus 5 are a bit higher and in today's range smartphones. It has the Snapdragon, well Qualcomm Snapdragon 800 processor, 2 gigabytes of RAM, 16 or 32 gigabytes of storage, and it is running on the newest version of Android, Android 4.4.4 KitKat. So that is another advantage of having Google's phone is you will be the first ones to receive the updates every time Google releases one. So when Android Licorice finally gets released to the public, you will be the first one to have it and everyone else will have to wait around six or six weeks or so to get it on their phones. Now the hardware on this phone isn't bad at all. Now I really do like the design and feel of the iPhone 5S while I do most prefer the Nexus 5 feel. One way is because of the screen, and on the bottom of the iPhone 5S, you just get a 3.5mm head jack. The left microphone is the driver, and the right microphone is really just the little holes to make it look nice, and a lightning connector. On the left-hand side, you get 
two antennas, one on the top, one on the bottom, a mute on off switch, and one volume button, and one volume down button. So that's pretty much all you get on the top. And the orange indicates it's on vibrate, and the clear indicates is on not vibrate or ringer. On the right hand side of the iPhone 5S, you get the slim card slot or the SIM card slot, which you can put any nano SIM as long as the uh, nano SIM is compatible with your carrier. In this case, I'm using T-Mobile. On the top, you also get a push button for your screen. Um, on, uh, on the iPhone 6, of course, it's going to be on the side, just like the Nexus 5 because of the bigger screen. On the back of the Nexus 5, you get the speaker. Again, the left-hand side is a driver, and the right-hand side are just holes. On the bottom of the thing, you also get the micro USB connector uh, that is popular with all Android phones. On the left-hand side of the Nexus 5, you get the volume rocker, which is made of ceramic, uh, so that is really cool, and it's just one bar, no indents or no separate buttons, which I really do love how the Nexus 5 kept its slim look and design. Now, taking a look on the Nexus 5 left-hand side, or right-hand side, actually, I just said the right-hand side, you get the SIM tray, which is a little bit bigger for its nano SIM card, so it still uses the same SIM card compatible with any US carrier except Verizon. You also get the power on-off switch, which allows you to power on and power off the device using that switch. On the top, you get a 2-megapixel front-facing camera, which is the one on the left-hand side, a proximity sensor, which is all the one on the all the way on the right-hand side. However, you cannot see that, and the little circular little model, which is painted white or red on the white or red models for your little earpiece on the front of the screen you'll notice that there are no on-screen buttons and they're all off-screen which make it really nice to me on the back of the phone you get this really nice textury feel that allows you to just for some reason is so attractive to me that's why another big reason I got this phone you can just rub your fingers across it however it does get covered with the case that's the only downside because that's how I rock all my phones with cases on them there it is again, just sort of indented and sleek into the phone itself, and the horizontal pattern is amazing. There it is, another look at the uh, little ceramic buttons. It's very slim and sleek, and uh, the volume button and the power button is very sleek and slim as well. Take a look at the camera itself. We got an 8 megapixel rear facing camera, which does great in uh, daylight, however, not so great in low light due to its a little lower f stop than iPhone 5S's, coming in at around 2.4 instead of 2.2. Now the screen is where you really notice the screens. You can not tell a pixel even when squinting and since LG does do an amazing job at doing screens, I love them and I want to thank them and give them a big shout out for doing it, putting a great screen. However, Apple also does a great job with the rent of displays such as our more of them really work on the bigger devices, not on the smaller devices. All the Apple products, MacBooks Pros and everything works absolutely fantastic on that. And when you do actually open up the phone itself, it does give a great example. Uh, the Touch ID is amazing on this phone. I was astounded when I first used this phone for its Touch ID. I, I loved it. I could not do anything else. However, there are those downsides where you do have to actually enter the password in order for you to get access to the phone. On the rear of the iPhone 5S, you get the camera of an 8 megapixel camera and Apple's new True Tone Flash, which is supposed to actually help. And it does uh, to alleviate skin tones in when taking pictures of this. Um, so that's still pretty cool. And you also get your little microphone for video as long with a kind of shiny little Apple logo that does get scratched and dirty. So I I recommend you put a nice leather case on there to keep it from not getting scratched and dirty so that's a really good upside there it is the camera however this camera does not stick out but the only downside about this one is is how it does not have optical image stabilization just like the Nexus 5 does in video so the Nexus 5 is video is very very smooth and really light and talking about light the phones are extremely light even though you might notice that the uh, Nexus 5 is actually 16% heavier than the iPhone 5s when put on a scale but when you're actually holding it and realizing that the iPhone 5s is much more dense in the um, Nexus 5, you really get the difference that they're pretty much the same and there is no difference between the two devices. And that's pretty much it for today, guys. If you guys enjoyed the video, please make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel as always to stay tuned to the latest and greatest tech here. As always, see you guys. Everything changes.